Hi guys, Dr. Betts here and welcome back to Chemistry 1032 instructional videos. Right now we'll be going over chapter 4.3, families of organic compounds slash functional groups. Now organic molecules can have other atoms in them besides carbon and hydrogen. And those other atoms are called heteroatoms. Okay? A group of atoms bonded in a particular way is called a functional group. So heteroatoms can make functional groups. Pretty simple so far, right? There's some definitions you have to know. Each functional group has specific properties and predictable chemical reactivity. So we don't have to memorize every organic molecule that's out there. We just have to know what functional groups they have and what properties those groups have and we can kind of predict chemistry moving forward, which is kind of why we uh, study it, because it's so awesome that you can just recognize some functional groups and kind of understand at least a little bit how a molecule will behave. Now, here's a very common functional group called a carbonyl. Carbonyl. It is a carbon double bonded to oxygen. It is one of the more common uh, functional groups that are out there. And we're going to put R on here. Now, R is a common abbreviation for rest of the molecule. So whenever you see an R on a, on a drawing, just know that R can be pretty, pretty darn near anything, pretty darn near, near anything, including hydrogen. It can also be hydrogen. Now, there are some cases where R cannot be hydrogen. That will generally be told to you uh, very clearly that R does not equal hydrogen, but can be a, pretty much any other carbon-based group. It can be pretty much anything like that. So just keep that in mind. And look for carbonyls. They are extraordinarily common. Uh, a lot of uh, families of organic molecules have them, so they're, they're good to recognize. Another common uh, functional group is called the OH group written H-O or O-H. It's called hydroxyl. Hydroxyl is extremely common. It's O-H or H-O. Sometimes you'll see it drawn like this or like this. They're all hydroxyl. These are the expanded formulas and those are the condensed formulas of hydroxyl, but they're all hydroxyl. So here, we have an example of a molecule that contains hydroxyl. And here's an example of R, where R is the rest of the molecule. And that's how it's done, guys. Now, let's discuss some common classes of, or families of organic molecules. Alkane. Saturated hydrocarbon. Uh, for example, propane is the pretty good example. Propane. Alkanes have carbon to carbon single bonds. So carbon to carbon single bonds only. Now, alkene Alkenes are what they call unsaturated hydrocarbons. That's ethylene. E-N-E, -E. notice how they end in the same suffix, alkanes, ane, ene, ene, they all end in the same suffix. Now, unsaturated hydrocarbons contain a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond, all right, and a triple bond also, but uh, alkenes only had double bonds. Alkyne, those contain carbon-to-carbon triple bonds, for example. That's uh, ethylene, or also known as acetylene. That's not uh, very common in nature, but it is uh, 
definitely a class or a family of organic compounds. There's also a last one here called the aromatics. Hydrocarbons. It's also a hydrocarbon. These are a little bit more involved to draw, so let me just take a minute here. Aromatics are six-membered rings. Of course, there's hydrogens and all these carbons, right? This is the expanded or the Lewis structure, right? So let's draw the uh, line drawing or the uh, skeletal formula of that. And I can do a little better than that for you guys. There we go, which is the same as drawing that. All three of those are different ways of representing the aromatic class of organic compounds, or a family, I guess they're called families. Let's move along. Alcohol. Another family. Alcohols contain hydroxyl. Remember, hydroxyl is OH. So R, O, H, or R cannot be hydrogen. For example, CH3, CH2, OH. This is alcohol. This is ethanol. That's the uh, ingredient that's in beer and wine. Those are alcohols. Uh, how about ether? Ether. Ethers contain R, O, R, where R cannot be hydrogen. Uh, for example, CH3, CH2, O, CH2, C, o, CH3. Diethyl ether. So this is also an ether. Notice the similarities between ethers and alcohols. They both contain an oxygen. Alcohol has an OH bond, where ether has an R has a uh, alkane, some kind of alkane on either side. Neither one of these are hydrogen, so this is not an alcohol. Alcohol has to have an OH. Okay, these are called ethers. Sulfide. Sulfide is very similar to alcohol. But instead of an OH, you have an SH, sulfide. So an example of a sulfide would be something like this. There you go. That's a sulfide. And there's also disulfide. And that's going to be R, S, S, R. Where here you have two sulfurs making a bond. Those are called disulfides. Those are very common in things like um, proteins and things like that. You'll see them. So keep that in mind. So there you go. Alcohols, ether, sulfides, disulfides. And let me think if there's anything else. I'll get to them in a minute. I'm thinking of other ones, but I want to do them in a particular order. All right. Next, we're going to talk about uh, carbonyl-containing classes. There's a carbonyl. Ketone. and aldehyde. Ketone and aldehyde. Now they both contain carbonyl. Ketone, carbonyl, let me change color there because I blended up into the blue there a little bit. Ketone, carbonyl, R, R, where R cannot be hydrogen. For example, That's a ketone because you have a carbonyl and either side of the carbonyl is not a hydrogen, so it's going to be a ketone. Aldehyde. Aldehyde is carbonyl, but what makes an aldehyde special is the hydrogen that must be bonded to it. Let me make that a little, little nicer for you guys. Hydrogen that must be bonded to it. Now, in an aldehyde, the R group could be another hydrogen. It absolutely could be. That would be formaldehyde. But it doesn't have to be. It can be a carbon-based group, too. So R, in this case, can be hydrogen or any other group. 
Here's an example of an aldehyde. There you go. So there's the an aldehyde class. Look a second. I'm kind of being a stickler in my drawings, I guess, guys. I just want to make them as nice as I can for you. There we go. There's an aldehyde. Now notice the difference between ketones and aldehydes. The difference is right here. Aldehydes have an H directly bonded to the carbonyl carbon. That's how you tell them apart. All right. Now let's talk about another class that contains carbonyl. Let me move that down just a touch, guys. There we go. Ester. And let me change color here. Carboxylic acid. Now again, they both contain carbonyl, but now you have to put an O on one side. Both of them have that. They both have an O on one side. Doesn't matter if it's left or the right side, but it has to be on one side of the carbonyl carbon. In the case of carboxylic acid, there must be an H on that oxygen. It has to be an H right there. If it's not there, bond it to that oxygen, it is not a carboxylic acid. And then R. Now for ester, this R group right here that I'm underlining cannot be hydrogen. If it's a hydrogen, then it would be carboxylic acid. Are you with me? So R here must be some kind of carbon group. So let me draw you an example of a carboxylic acid. Here's the most interesting and famous carboxylic acid. I shouldn't say the most interesting, but the one that I think tastes the best anyway. That's acetic acid. That's the common ingredient. Oh, that's the common, I shouldn't say the common. That is the flavoring ingredient of uh, white vinegar. Let me move my mug up here for you guys. And then an ester, you can just draw There we go. So there's an ester. Notice how this group right here is not hydrogen. The, the group bonded to the oxygen is not hydrogen. That makes it an ester. All right, guys, the next class of compounds we need to talk about are the amines. There are three types. There's primary, secondary, and tertiary. A primary amine has one carbon bonded to the nitrogen, and the other two things are hydrogen. Secondary amine has two carbons bonded to the nitrogen, and one of them is hydrogen. And a tertiary amine has three carbons bonded to the nitrogen, and none of them are, car are hydrogen. So this is, how, this is how this kind of stuff works. Let me give you a real life example. There you go, there's methylamine. Uh, NN dimethylamine. And this would be trimethylamine. Now these are all amines. These are all amines, guys. So keep that in mind that an amine is a nitrogen with a hydrogen on it, okay? Uh, probably the more common ones we're gonna see probably are secondary and primary, tertiary to a lesser extent, but these are amines. And there's amide. Now amides are similar to esters and carboxylic acids, if you will. Amides have carbonyls, but instead of an O, which would be a carboxylic acid or an ester, we put a nitrogen. That's amide. Now this is a very important bond. This is a very important bond, amide. It is also known as a peptide bond. When it connects amino acids. So 
when we go back and we start talking about um, proteins and peptides and enzymes, a peptide bond is an amide bond that connects two amino acids. All right? Let me give you an example of an amide. Just a simple little um, amide bond. There you go. Simple little amide uh, for you to consider. And there you go. These are called the amides. They're also called peptides if they're combining amino acids. And those are your family. So here's an example problem. Let us find the family of compounds drawn in each drawing below. Now, after going over them, I think you guys should be able to try this on your own. So pause the video, even though this is an example. Go ahead and pause it anyway. Try to figure out what class of what families of compounds we're looking at. Keep in mind that one contains more than one. It contains actually three different families of compounds in one molecule. So go ahead, pause the video, see how you do. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's look at the one here in the top corner. This right here has a hydroxyl right there, right? So this is alcohol. Good, very good, very good. Let's look at this one down here. Well, find the most important thing, that carbonyl right there. That's a carbonyl. That's the thing you look for. Look to the left, look to the right. What's attached to the carbonyl? Well, just carbon-based groups, right? There's no hydrogen. There's no oxygen. So if there's no hydrogen on the carbonyl, we know it's not an aldehyde. If there's no oxygen on the carbonyl, we know it's not a carboxylic acid or an ester. What is it? It's a ketone. Uh, let's look at this one. Now we have some skeletal structures. Well, this is another alcohol. How about this one up here? Again, there's that carbonyl. The first thing I know is carbonyl. Is there a hydrogen on it? No. So it's not an aldehyde. Is there any, any atom besides carbon bonded to it? No. Yes, I should say yes, pardon me. There's that oxygen right there. So now I know when there's an oxygen bonded to a carbonyl, there's two choices. It can be a uh, carboxylic acid or an ester. If it was a carboxylic acid, this group here would have to be a hydrogen. But it's not. It's an ester. So uh, it's not. It's a carbon-based group. So it must be an ester. Okay? Now the hard one. The hard one. This one here. It has one group here, one family here, another family is here, and another family is here. It has three different families of compounds in the same molecule. That happens all the time. That's not a big deal. This right here is an NH2, and, no car and this is not a carbonyl. So that's an amine. Okay? If this carbon right here, I get my laser pointer, if that carbon right there had been a carbonyl, this would have been not an amine, it would have been an amide. Like here, there's a carbonyl, and there's a nitrogen. So this right here that I'm circling with my laser pointer, that is an amide. Okay? The difference between the amine and the amide is the carbonyl. The carbonyl. Now, oops. I'm telling you guys, I'm getting frustrated here. Now, this group right here, that group right there, that's a carboxylic acid. And because it got erased, let me just write them all in. Amide. And that's an amine. All right. And that is how you do it. Now, I know it's challenging. It's because you just learned it. It's definitely going to be challenging. But the only way to learn it is to do it. So here's one for you. Pause the video, come on back. Notice, that has numerous, numerous, numerous things going on. Don't get discouraged. Try really hard. Come on back when you're done. All right, guys, welcome back. I'm just going to write the answers in, and if you got anything wrong, go back and review. That's an amine. This is an ether. That right there is aldehyde.
all of those are alcohol. And that is also alcohol. So I hope I didn't fool you there. I hope I didn't trick anyone with four, uh, four alcohols in a row plus one at the very bottom. Unsaturated hydrocarbons, alkenes. Now we've already talked a little bit about alkenes, but let's just write some of this stuff down in our notes to have a little more information. Carbon-carbon double bond is an unsaturated hydrocarbon functionality known as the alkene. They are unsaturated hydrocarbons because they have more than one bond between two carbon atoms. They have a carbon-carbon double bond. Or a triple bond, but we usually just focus on the carbon-carbon double bond as an unsaturated. These are the aromatics. These are some things you might just want to drop down real quick. Got its name supposedly because it was, you know, has a pleasant smell to it. Um, there you go. The aromatic compounds are pictured are, are what they look like. I've already shown you this, and I've already shown you basically that. They're called the aromatics. So here are some um, examples of saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. So again, unsaturated means carbon hydro, uh, carbon carbon single bonds only. So this one is saturated. All the carbon-carbon bonds there are single bonds, so it's saturated. Right here we have a double bond, so that's unsaturated. And this one, there it is right there, that's aromatic. Pretty simple, right? Look for the double bond, unsaturated. No double bond, oh, sorry, look for the double bond, it's unsaturated. No double bonds, saturate it. If you have a ring like that one with alternating double bonds, or it may have a circle in it, right? Remember, it may also have that. That is a aromatic. You try. Pause the video. Come on back when you're done. Welcome back. All right. I'm sure everyone got this right because I think this is pretty simple. There's a double bond. That's unsaturated. This bad boy right here doesn't have any double bonds, just single bonds. That is saturated. And this thing is a six-member ring with alternating double bonds. That is benzene. And that's aromatic. So I'm pretty sure you all got that right. I didn't even spend time on it, really. Just got right past it because I'm pretty sure after memorizing all the uh, classes of compounds, pretty or the families of compounds, I'm pretty sure... Picking out unsaturated from saturated was pretty easy for you guys to do. Now, just as, an, as a quick aside, I wanted to show you this. Here's a couple of very common um, pharmaceuticals. I guess the pharmaceuticals are usually over the counter, I guess. Maybe ephedrine's not. Or, sorry, epinephrine. I'm not sure if that's over the counter or not. Now, look at the ibuprofen. You can see right here we have a, an alkane over here. That bad boy right there is aromatic. Right up in here is a carboxylic acid. So it's got three classes or three families of compounds in one. And it's a very common uh, anti-inflammatory uh, anti agent. Uh, epinephrine, here we have an aromatic. Those are called aromatic alcohol. Those are called phenols. Here we have ourselves an alcohol. Here we have ourselves an amine. So as you can see, a lot of these molecules have numerous families of compounds contained in them and they make up the drugs and the molecules that we use every day in our life. Pretty neat, huh? Lipids are hydrocarbons, and they're called fatty acids. Now, let's just talk about fatty acids real quick. Fatty acids have a carboxylic acid. There you go. There's a carboxylic acid. And there you go. This is a saturated fatty acid. What makes it saturated? The fact that they're in this hydrophobe, this uh, long hydrocarbony tail here. There's carbon-carbon single bonds only. So this is a saturated fatty acid.
Now, an unsaturated fatty acid, we all know, has to have at least one double bond because the word unsaturated means carbon-carbon double bond. So let's draw this unsaturated one. Oops, sorry, my hand got a little out of control there. Try again. There we go. And there's our carbon carbon double bond here. All right, so this is an unsaturated Oh, got my big head in the way here. That's an unsaturated fatty acid. Now this one that I just drew would be monounsaturated because it only has one carbon-carbon double bond. Now, if you want it to have a polyunsaturated, the word poly means many double bonds, or poly means many. So polyunsaturated means many double bonds, which implies it would have more than one. So you can have two, three, or four uh, double bonds, and you'd have a polyunsaturated fat at that point. And here are just some examples. Let me get my mug out of the way. Here are some examples of common saturated fats that uh, most of us are familiar with. There's peanut oil here, canola, stearic acid comes from animals, palm oil, we've all heard of that. There's a yummy one, there's nutmeg, and uh, there's lauric acid right there. So these are all very, very common. I'm sure most of you have used all of them uh, at some point in your life. From the following drawings, circle the carboxylic acid and the hydrocarbon portions. For the hydrocarbon, indicate if it is saturated or unsaturated. So this question is only asking you to do a couple things. It's not hard. It wants you to circle the carboxylic acid. Now the carboxylic acid is right here. That's the carboxylic acid. Let's take a different color, let's take blue, and let's circle the hydrocarbon part. There you go. Now, let's take red, I guess. Now, this has a double bond, so this is unsaturated. There's a couple double bonds here, so this is polyunsaturated, but let's just call it un. And down here, there's no double bond, so that's saturated. Okay, and that's how you do it. Here's one for you to try. Circle the carboxylic acid, circle the and uh, the hydrocarbon uh, parts. Make sure you indicate which one's which by just kind of writing it there. And uh, for the hydrocarbon, indicate if it is saturated or unsaturated. Pause the video, give it a try. All right, guys, welcome back. Let's use green. Let's circle our carboxylic acids in green. Carboxylic acids. Let's take a different color, say purple, and let's circle the hydrocarbon part. So with the hydrocarbon part over here too, why not? There we go. Here we have a carbon-carbon double bond. So this is an unsaturated fat. And here there's no double bond, so this is saturated. Now, I hope you got that right. I think that's fairly simple for you guys. If not, just go back and review what saturated and unsaturated mean and uh, what, what the carboxylic acids look like. And then uh, try it again. Make sure you get it right. It's very simple, easy points in an exam. And now we're going to stop at 4.4 and pick it up next time. That video ran a little bit long, but that's the way it is sometimes. Um, please make sure you get all this stuff. It's all very important information. And if you have any questions, please let me know. With that, I wish you good luck and good chemistry.